never want to race a quad though. That looks like a lot of work. <laughs> What's up guys, I'm Josh Mosman. Welcome to This Week in MXA, presented by O'Neill Racing. Thank you guys for tuning in. This weekend, we are in Union, South Carolina at the Big Buck GNCC. It's the first round of the GNCC series for the 2024 season. And we're here to answer the million dollar question. Is GNCC racing really as gnarly as everybody says it is? Yamaha brought it all the way out here to ride their new 2024 Yamaha YZ450 FX cross country model. It's a bone stock bike. We're gonna race it this weekend and uh, see if the track is really as gnarly as they say it is and see how well a motocrosser from the West Coast can do here on the East Coast. All right. Jesse Ziegler of Cycle News Magazine. Hi, everybody. James Lissamore of Dirt Rider Magazine for this weekend. And we are at the, what do we call this, the pro section? I think this is like the pro hill climb section of the XC1 ATV Pro Class today at the Big Buck GNCC. I'm a rookie to this. Yeah. Watching quads on this Saturday is pretty gnarly. Yeah, I gotta give these guys a ton of credit for being able to do what they're doing on those machines. Like, not pretty great. I can't even explain what I'm seeing right now. Uh, <laughs> this is my first time here. How many of these have you done? I've probably been to like at least 10 GNCCs in my life. Uh, I've raced, raced a handful of them on motorcycles. I've never raced a quad because I'm definitely not man enough to do that after watching them today, that's for sure. But all right, so Jether, the motorcycle race is going to be pretty impressive too. Yeah. Jesse's been my inside source, giving me all the hot scoops on <laughs> yeah. CC racing. Yeah. Pretty gnarly from what we can see. And pretty crazy to see the crowd that has gathered, what, two miles from the pits? Yeah, it's going to be like that when you race uh, tomorrow. You're going to run into these pockets out in the woods. You're like, I thought I was 10 miles from the from the truck and there'll be like 100, 200 people that are cheering you on that's trying to hand you a beer or something stupid. That's so, pretty cool. It's a good time. It's a good time. The people here are what makes GNCC so awesome. Uh, it's like a really big family event. As you can tell, there's families everywhere. People come for the whole weekend to camp out in the campers. Their kids race in the morning early, then the dad will race, and then, you know, some one of their family members race a quad, and then they all culminate at the afternoon race, you know, tomorrow for the pro bike guys. And, girls and it's like mind-blowing how fast they're gonna race dirt bikes through these trees. Let's make it happen. Zach Karen here at the finish line. I was told that when I come around the finish line they'll tell the time will show what position I'm in, what else does it show and how does it work? Absolutely so yeah pretty simple you come across the line you'll hear the nice beep uh, you'll go past the finish line around this next corner and you get an idea it gives you your lap position it gives you the distance between yourself and the rider in your class in front of you so that doesn't necessarily mean the rider you see but the next guy that you want to pass in front of you uh, a lot of riders tell me straight up they don't look at it but usually those guys are in the top three so if you're further back in the back it gives you an idea of where you're at in your class because um, a lot of times a couple hundred bikes out there in the 10 a.m. class it's hard to tell so yeah, yeah position your number and then your gap between the rider you between you and the rider in front. all right so I'm in the 10 a.m. moto I'm in the a sportsman class that goes behind the pro women right is that second on the row yeah that's correct but I also know you got some serious skills on a motorcycle sure. so you might not be seeing any gap between anybody it might be the gap behind you but uh, yeah you'll be racing against the WXC's but don't worry the ladies are gonna give you a run for the money I hope so that's, it's gonna be it's gonna be wild I've never done a, a race in the trees like this uh, Corey McDonald says I need to get top 10 overall to kind of earn his respect and for him to say okay you got the thumbs up of approval to race the pro class do you think I could do that I think it's more than possible I want you in the top three so you can talk to me on the podium man so get the start and I think you can get it all the way to the finish all right should be interesting <laughs> For, uh, for Josh? For, all, for the media guys. And all Daniel. wins. I expect nothing but wins. Help. Across the board. But just to have fun. Be safe. Go fast, take chances. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we're trying for a top 10 overall today. And if he does that, then that's just going to push him right into where we're going to throw him in the three hour race the next one he shows up. And uh, where he really will feel a real life GNCC experience then. So what? I don't know how he's gonna do today. I know he's a good rider on on the West Coast and Moto and everything. So we'll see how he does in the East Coast and the ruts and the mud and the roots and all the rocks and all that good stuff. I think the biggest struggle he's gonna have is with the uh, lap riders and you know in GNCCs you'll take a line and then the next time around you think you have a good line choice and there'll be like two or three lap riders either stuck in it 
parked in it or just holding you up so you're gonna have to take a different way and sometimes it works well and sometimes it, it doesn't work well at all well 450 450 stock right now the button's on the right do we need to move it well it, that's that's what all the racers do they put it on the left side okay you notice all the race bikes yep um your biggest thing is the reason why we put it on the left side is because our guys will open the throttle just a tiny bit and what it does is just it's like a sweet spot you find and it really makes the bike fire fast yeah you give it too much though cool all right well, i need yeah. to do some practice in the parking lot <laughs> yeah all right guys liam draper he's the defending champion in the xc2 class me in this 10 a.m moto what's your best recommendation for a motocross guy from the west coast uh man I don't, don't hit those trees they ain't gonna move yeah but uh no i think it'll be good it's pretty wide out there the track's not too rough just yet There's plenty of tree roots but i think the lines will open up now cool after this 8 a.m race it's kind of one line right now from the quads yesterday yeah so. There'll be plenty of lines. Cool. All right. Yeah. All good luck. Thank you. You too. In 1973, I was r riding my Schwinn uh, bicycle, and I went to Adams Grocery Store in Waterloo, Iowa, and I picked up the first issue of Motocross Action right off the shelf. Pretty awesome. Still own it and still get them. That's awesome. Yeah. And still own that first. I haven't. I don't think I've ever seen a first issue, so that's that's yep. pretty cool. Yep. Covers uh, off it, but I still got it. Nice. Yeah. That's cool. Well, so, man, what's your yep. name? Uh, Scott Eckerman. How do you think I'll do today? Well, I'm I'm looking around here, and you, you're fighting against Dark Side, but uh, no, you're gonna win. Seriously. <laughs> okay. I've, I've seen, between you and your brother Skill, I'm sure it's, it's hereditary in the family. So yeah. between you and your brother Skill, no, you'll win. All right. It's a game. You. you better win. I better. I guess. <laughs> set right, set the bar. Thanks. Take care. Thank yep. you. I have to be Claudia. Uh, she's our biggest competition at Racer X. Racer? Like, I'm not really sure. She's a 60 year old woman <laughs> who just clowns on everyone. <laughs> and I just, I gotta, I gotta just, go on, just I gotta get her. <laughs> to survive, not crash more than three times, and have a nice shot of Jaeger at the end of the day. Huh? I definitely gonna have fun. I'm gonna find a nice shady tree somewhere and kind of lay there for about two hours and then come in strong.
got the light on. Alright. You got goggles? Yeah. How was it? Pretty fun. Yeah. I was doing good and then a couple guys passed me. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Right behind the girl. You're good, you're clear right now. wild. I tuckered out. Two hours. I got second place in my class. So I don't know what I got overall. I think that was pretty good. I felt pretty good out there. I was actually better than I expected. Woo! GNCC is really hard though. I race pro normally and today I race the A class which is like an amateur pro class. The next the next moto with the pro class would be way earlier. Three, three hours. Track gets rougher. I definitely need to train before I do that. Train a little bit more. Had a good battle going. I hooked in behind Brandy Richards for a while. And I just followed her lines and that helped a ton. Stevie, how, how'd I do? You did wonderful. You are ripping. Better than you expected? Yeah. Yeah, what a start. Dude, you like that start? Ooh. Killed it. That engine start. Yeah. That engine start, Nailed not bad. The, the tight clutch, huh? Yeah. That's right. Woo, good Nailed time. the pit stop. Nailed the pit stop. Next round, I pick right. Little gas. Nice job. Thanks, Doggy. Joel, what do you got to say for the video? Hey, this guy's, he's a warrior right here. I've known him since you were probably, what, 10 years old? Yeah, at least 10 years old. Yeah, at least 10 years old. What about uh, FMF? How's FMF doing out here? You guys are at all the rounds? We're here at the first run. We'll be at a few more this year. We carry um, two-stroke, four-stroke, all of our apparel, things like that. We try to carry at least a couple of each pipe for the guys. So nice. depending on the brand, we have, you know, cool. stuff for them. So. Good stuff, Joel. Thank Good you. Good See you. Claudia got me. Why? What'd you do to the bike, dude? What didn't I do to the bike? I care. The bike did me. I don't know how I did that last lap, to be honest. Fuck me, fuck me. All the fuck me. Oh. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm pretty tough. But a big fire? Yeah. Yeah. Good time? Good time. A very good experience for me. Yes. Monkeys. Not so bad. But the back bay, <laughs> so monkeys never crap. <laughs> oh. You had too many bananas. Yeah. You know, uh, I went really, really slow, but I was happy. I was just mostly disappointed that I wasn't in the top form when Josh frickin' lapped me. <laughs> you know, I'd, 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 I'd have been a lot happier if I was styling and actually had to stop for him and wave him past because he couldn't get by me, but that wasn't how it went. Oh. No, I, I was watching him out there. We, I, I heard before, you know, see if he's ready for three hours. I think I think he can do the three hours. I think he needs to get on a 250 and try uh, some XC2 racing. Actually, you no, know, he looks smooth. Like normally, you see a moto guy. Sometimes they get the roots in the rocks. They kind of start looking like a fish out of water. But he was, he was soaking that stuff up good. How much gnarlier is the track gonna be for those guys, though? I mean, your last lap. Yeah. So they're gonna start. On. Is what they're gonna start on. But it's gonna get more G outs, more holes, more roots exposure. But you'll see these guys. See one guys. They'll kind of try to find the lines around those or whatever, and not stay in that main line. All right, so the real question, the question we're asking is GNCC as gnarly as people say it is? I'm gonna say yes, I'm gonna say yes. Uh, but I also surprised myself that I did as good as, well, let's see. I surprised myself that I rode as good as I did and I didn't get as tired as I thought I would have. But I also got beat by three girls and two other guys. I think one guy was probably in a different class and one guy was in the Sportsman A class and he came up and passed me. But my strategy for the whole race was obviously get a good start because you can that's where you pass the most guys. You don't get caught behind people as much. And then I caught up to Brandy Richards and then once I caught her, she picked up the pace and started going faster. But it was awesome because I stayed behind her for like a lap and a half. And it was like road biking where you're just drafting somebody. I was just drafting her, not wind wise, but following her lines. And uh, that helped me, you know, find the smooth lines, but also not have to think. Because the biggest part about GNCC is thinking about which line choice you're going to get. 
and thinking about where you're going to go. And with her, she would let the lappers know who were coming, and then I would rev too. This 450 is so loud from Yamaha, but uh, but yeah, it was good. So I also had to pit, and I think you know, obviously, some of the other guys had bigger tanks, so uh, that would have helped if I didn't have to pit. But still, super fun. Yeah, thank you, Yamaha, for letting me ride the YZ 450 FX, and uh, this thing handled amazing. But I might be better off on a 250, or I got to train more if I want to ride this thing harder and <laughs> faster. What do you think, Corey? Did I earn your your stripes, earn your respect? You did. What was it, six overall? I think so. In what place in class? Second in class. That's awesome. Yeah, I know in the beginning, like you were ripping and you were smooth. I was like, man, he's looking at making that stock bike look awesome out there. And uh, towards the end, I saw a Honda guy creeping up a little bit. And uh, he, uh, I think what he had is the advantage, just that, that second half, knowing yeah. with all the lap riders. Is, yeah, lap riders are one of the biggest struggles in the morning. You just, it's unpredictable what happens. Sometimes they'll like give you a hand signal to pass, but then that's where they're actually going. They'll they'll turn into you. Yeah. So yeah, that second half gets a little bit different, but now it's time to, now it's time to bump you up. XC2 or XC1? Hey man, how can you ride a 250? I don't know, I think pretty good. I don't race, I race 450 mostly. But also, I'm not in the best of shape, so I, if I'm going to race a three-hour race, I need to work out a little bit more, which which is the plan. I definitely yeah. think my riding style is better on a 450, so maybe, but I do need to work out before I go do three hours. The biggest thing I say for three hours, like if you're in shape, you're in shape, but a lot of it is mental, knowing to keep yourself hydrated, and like me being as small as I was when I was racing, I used to have to actually have to drink a small boost, like the, uh, the little shake. Yeah very hard to do yeah but uh man that would like just it would bring me back to life halfway through because cool. my body just couldn't produce so much that's where a lot of the baylor boys in the really gnarly races they got a little extra reserve than most people and it it, it helps yeah a lot of people talk some flack about them being bigger but it helps in the more gnarly races yeah that's cool that's cool um dude the bike looked good yeah like the bike you were looking really good out there it looks like you've got one little number there i hit the i hit a tree but i never went down okay yeah, so we run bar ends just because we don't like to crush the throttle tube if they hit the ground. Like some guys complain about them, but it's like, hey, would you rather run the bar end or crash and then throttle being mixed up? So, yeah, good times. Dude, I brought the stash for you. I, brought the I got rid of the stash. Yeah. Dude, this is pre Hangtown. Pre Hangtown 2016? 2016. I have the 2017. I was going to wear that too. Really? Yeah. Factory, factory. Well, Tom, is this your first GNCC or have you been to a couple? No, man. Grew up going to GNCCs. Oh, really? Okay. Well, how do you think I did? I think you did fantastic. I actually took a screenshot. You were overall after first and second lap. Really? Yeah. That's super um, so nice. I have the proof. Really? You coming through. Yeah. Um, I was super stoked to see you like, chasing those girls down. Dude, <laughs> factory girls. Factory girls are gnarly. Moving, moving through the woods in there. Yeah. Yeah. So it was awesome to see you like, going from the tracks. Because I was talking to Dad on the way here. like. Glen Helen, dude, all momentum and just carrying flow here. It's like a totally different. different kind of flow. Yeah. Yeah. I think you killed it. And you were doing some work on the track. What happened? A uh, guy, unfortunately, hit a tree pretty hard right before the hill climb there. Uh, pretty sure he ended up with like a femur, definitely a femur fracture, maybe a dislocation and some other stuff. So, so the old Alpine star stuff came, came back out yeah. on an off weekend. Dr. Tom is a doctor, doctor of physical therapy, but also... Uh, certified medic, he goes with the Alpine Star med Medical Unit to his few of the Supercross outdoor rounds. So, that guy worked, guy lucked out that you were there with him. Did he get hauled out or what happened? Yeah, they had to take him out on the on the uh, the mule, the old Alpine Star's mule. Really? And then I guess we were talking to some people, they had a landing zone. So, I guess I think they actually brought the helicopter in to take him out. But he fell in literally the best place possible because there was a road right there all the way back. Yeah, yeah, it, it was probably the better spot to, to go down if you're going to go down. Yeah. yeah. All right, good times.